All right, so here's number two in uh, you know a, a objection handler for some very common um, uh, roadblocks that people put up. Uninformed people will put up about the uh, the validity of ADHD as uh, any sort of explanation for um, problematic behavior um, or consequences, problematic consequences of ADHD related symptoms. Uh, and again, I should just say is, uh, at the outset, I am a, a lay person. This is an opinion piece coming from a lay person who is uncommonly informed about ADHD and who has ADHD, but I do not, uh, that's, that's the extent of my qualifications. So please take anything I say uh, with that in mind. Another very common one that uh, I know a lot of ADHD people who get, those who are pretty bright and advantaged in a bunch of ways, you know, they, they, they know a lot, of, let's say they come from families where having a university education is very commonplace and maybe even expected, um, who have, uh, a, you know, the family or extended members of that family have a bourgeois income and a nice quality of life. Um, you know, just various advantages that might, that might, uh, so they are, those people could very often be in the company of, uh, those who have higher status in society and are, uh, quite high achieving, um, with whom to compare themselves and with whom to be compared by their family members or their peers. And, um, something that, uh, I, I'm lucky enough to be one of those people and, uh, very lucky and um, something that I've had uh, quite a lot imputed to me, um, something that people have, you know, with the best of intentions, granted, have uh, imputed the uh, disabilities associated with my ADHD. They've, they have misattributed the etiology of those to uh, low self-esteem. Um, and which also goes hand in hand with another one come, that I'm going to be dealing with in the coming up soon in another episode, another mini episode. Off, very often these two also go hand in hand with the idea that the ADHD person isn't trying hard enough. And if they would just apply themselves more and, you know, and if they weren't so afraid because of their low self-esteem to, um, apply themselves more then their disabilities would go away. Um, you would not see evidence of them and you would not see the damages of them or not nearly to the same extent that you, you do in that person's life. Um, I'd say that for people who actually do have ADHD, um, it's much more likely to be the, I mean, it, you know, poor self-esteem can occur in all kinds of people for all sorts of reasons. And plenty of people who, um, have, you know, are full abilities right across the board and full advantages right across the board and full privileges right across the board you know, socially and familially and otherwise, um, who have poor self-esteem. There are all kinds of reasons why that could be. But here's the thing. Um, if you have ADHD uh, and it's gone undiagnosed and you have had no help for that and you have not had any explanation for the chronic uh, difficulties that you struggle with on a daily basis in getting your stuff together and self-organizing towards obtaining your medium and long-term goals, um, and in a timely manner and according to protocol and according to expectations um, and according to and, and according to what you want for yourself, you know, very badly. If you're facing those difficulties day in and day out, month in and month out, years and years and years on, and you're getting no recognition of what your real problem is or a major contributing problem, your ADHD, um, and then you have a track record full of, of underachievement, if not failure, uh, behind you that are a result of those disabilities not being addressed in any sort of way, then you are going to have low self-esteem. So it's really, it's like a chicken or egg question, you know? Um, I think it was, it's Dr. Ned Hallowell, the psychiatrist who also has ADHD and, and along with his colleague um, who also has ADHD, fellow psychiatrist, uh, John Ratty, they've written some excellent books um, under the title Driven to Distraction. They've done a series with that and I think a couple of others and they're, they're really good, I recommend them. Very uplifting too, very, you know, very helpful in all kinds of ways. Anyhow, I think it was Ned Hallowell who, who had said, you know, you, um, you know, people with ADHD often have this, they often have this symptom, they often have this symptom, they often have this unwanted sort of effect in their life, blah, 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 and he goes down this long list of things and then, and he said, you know, this percentage has this, this percentage has that. And at the bottom, he says, 100% of adults with ADHD have low self-esteem. 
And if you're not in proper control of your um, own consciousness to a what is the expected developmental level degree, and you are suffering awful consequences, uh, little and you know little and big ones on a regular basis for a long period of time, yeah, your self-esteem is going to take a hit, a big hit. So um, yeah, you want to help people who have ADHD with their self-esteem, help them with their disabilities that are associated with their neurologically based disorder and help them achieve to the same level that would be indicated by their other abilities and their other advantages beyond the ADHD. Um, build the scaffold, help them build the scaffolding around themselves that's going to be required to, for them to obtain the same results as other people they have a lot in common with otherwise, but who are neurotypical. All right, next.